Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll look at a case study of one person who underwent gene therapy to increase the expression of HTERP. The paper does not identify the subject, but since it was written from BioViva and Integrated Health Systems, I would guess that it is Liz Parrish. I think this is exciting and important, not because it means that gene therapy will be generally available soon, but it is a first data point showing successful long-term use of gene therapy in humans. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the report, which was published in the peer review Journal of Regenerative Biology and Medicine. The title is Systemic Human HTER AAV Gene Transfer Therapy and the Effect on Telomere Length and Biological Age, a case report. The two authors are from Integrated Health Systems and BioViva. You can watch the second episode in our interview series with Liz Parrish for an introduction to BioViva. What was the case report? A single adult female was treated with AAV HTER gene therapy twice, five years apart. The first dose was on September the 16th, 2015, and the second on September the 24th, 2020. AAV stands for adeno-associated virus and is a common way of delivering genetic material to cells. We will look at HTERT and what it does in a minute. As a baseline at the beginning, periodically and at the end of the study, the telomere length of leukocytes, a type of white blood cell, was analyzed. We will cover the results later, but the telomeres did lengthen significantly. They calculated the biological age based on the telomere length and saw that the subject moved from 62 at the start of the study to 25 at the end. This was during the time the subject aged chronologically by 5.3 years. Very briefly, and oversimplifying a complex topic, what is the HTER treatment doing? Telomeres are protective caps on the end of chromosomes. Due to the way that chromosomes replicate during cell division, Every time a cell divides, the telomeres become a little bit shorter. Under normal circumstances, after a certain number of divisions, a telomere will become too short to adequately protect the chromosome, and the cell will enter replicative cellular senescence, or apoptosis. There is an enzyme, telomerase, which rebuilds the telomeres. HTERT, which stands for human telomere reverse transcriptase, is a subunit of telomerase. Normally, somatic cells do not express telomerase, so as we get older, our telomeres become shorter. In this study, by exogenously expressing HTERT, they hope to lengthen the telomeres and so increase the capability of cells to divide. Here is the graph showing the average telomere length in the white blood cells tested in the subject. We can see that they increase steadily with time from 6.71 kilobases to 8.94, which is about a 33% extension. Normally, we would expect them to get shorter over this time. Using telomere length as a clock to measure the biological age, the authors determined that from a starting age of 62, over 5.8 years, the subject returned to an age of 25. The telomere analysis was performed by SpectraCell Labs, which offers a telomere-based biological age test. I cannot find a statement to this effect, but I guess that this was the test that they used in the study. One of the questions that could arise is, does having longer telomeres mean that the subject is younger? I don't think that there's a single answer to this, as we still grapple with the question of what is biological age and how to measure it. However, I did want to look at telomeres as a measure of aging in particular. So let's have a look at this paper from January 2021. Telomere shortening is one of the hallmarks of cellular senescence and aging. Many common age-related diseases are associated with accelerated telomere attrition. So telomere length has been recognized as a biomarker of aging. But recent research indicates that telomere length can only give a rough estimate of aging and is not regarded as a clinical marker. And other markers, such as immune markers and epigenetic age, are better predictors of health status and risk of chronic disease. But they do say that telomere length remains a very informative marker when used in conjunction with other markers. The subject was also examined at the beginning and annually, and they reported no adverse effects in terms of the blood chemistry or in the physical exam. 
This is just a single data point, and there are several things to think about. Telomere length is not a very good measure of biological age, and there were no other improvements reported, for example, in blood markers. It should also be noted that gene therapy is expensive and not available in many jurisdictions. But I still think that it's amazing to see this kind of therapy can be used over the long term, so far appears to be safe in this case, and was effective at extending the telomeres. Gene therapy has some upsides. It could have potential rejuvenation capability, more so than small molecules. And indeed, there is no small molecule that I'm aware of that can lengthen telomeres. Also, the treatment was only given twice in five years, so definitely not a daily routine. I thought this was a very interesting step forward.